Tennessee the council on day one adopt the Māori doctrine uh, well known Māori doctrine ko tō tātou muri tō tātou mua yeah. and how we walk into the future backwards facing the past past is in front of us the future is behind us and the benefit of that theory is that the past is always constant and it's there to inform us and uh, give clarity to any future direction that we take. Yeah. And I'd like to see the council make that, accept that doctrine, adopt that doctrine, as how they might conduct their affairs. Yeah. That's, that would be something that I'd love I, to see. I think it's up to our people, though, to write that and take it to them. Yeah, so yeah. that when the, on the first day they sit at that table, it is put on the table for them. Mm. They can say yes or no, mm. or we'll consider and mull it over. Mm. But at least I'll never die wandering and it will stand for the record. Mm. And I, I think that's a good way to focus the mind of this new council. And regardless of, you know, the good, bad or indifferent at the political level, they're statutorily bound in the Act. Mm. So a doctrine that reminds them of that obligation, Royal Commission and all other breaches aside, you know, from the earliest days local government have been the real governance interface for our people. And I think about people like Nanako Manahanak. You know, that harbour out there would still be filthy and polluted mm -hmm. and ten times worse than it is now. When I was a young woman in local government, it was only her courage and, and cries that actually saw that place cleaned up. And everywhere, north, south and east in this new super city that you look, where there has been mitigation and, and healing of the landscape and, and the foreshore, dare I say, and the seabed, it's been as a direct result of our humble people from Hapu throughout the region, hammering on the door of ye olde county council and borough and city councils and saying, stop doing that. There's got to be a bit, we, we deny you that this is a breach of the treaty. So, you know, taking that mm. very thing that you're proposing, which is a Māori constitution mm. in its own right, for its own sake, is critical. And the bottom line is this. Time and again in this country, in my experience in local government, that goes back to the beginning of the 1980s, but even before then, local body politicians have enjoyed always saying, look, the treaty's nothing to do with local government. That belongs with central government. We're separate from them. But the fact that Rodney Hyde, a minority politician, could with a click of his fingers and a stroke of his pen create a whole new governance model for the entire Auckland region is proof positive that the real power of governance, even at the local government level, is always in the hands of the Crown should serve as a telling reminder to our people that they don't get off the hook at that level either. Just before we carry on, I think we've all go to the audience because um, there's a few um, hands being raised. Let's start off over there. Um, the, I like that um, the concept about focusing the Let's, um, Jasmine, do you have a comment on that? I definitely think they need focus and 100 days, you know, to um, inform everyone is, is like placing sort of like a deadline sort of thing on it and for a new structure to be brought in and to limit it to 100 days, you know, sort of like uh, expecting the council to be miracle workers. So if they do go in there with a good plan, then maybe it will work, but I think they'll have to um, use their time wisely and maybe look at... Um, communi communicating well with the public because 100 days is just 100 days, you know, and if, if they can't work out what they need to in the, that time, how are they going to inform the public to let them know that the decisions that they are making are, are going to be positive ones for the future and not just rushed ones? Heta, with no, disres with no disrespect either to, our, um, to the person who spoke earlier, 
transport, I would have thought, would have been one of the m most, most important issues that the new council would have to tackle in its first 100 days. And I just think of myself driving along the motorway <laughs> for an hour and a half every day, and, you know, yep. it's not a very happy thing to do. Yeah, um, well, in, anyone who lives in Auckland would agree. Yeah. Um, and if you're listening to Flavour, do. <laughs> <laughs> I would have Shameless thought. plug. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and Radio Wat there. Radio <laughs> I would have thought it would have been right up there in, ter in terms of priorities yeah, for I, the city. I would agree. I mean, it, it has to be sort of, and again, no disrespect, it's going to be one of the many issues that are, are probably on a, you know, a list as long as his arm. Um, but when you're talking Auckland, transport is the one that's pretty dear to people's hearts. So I suspect you know, that's the one that people have told him you have to get that right. Get the infrastructure in Auckland working properly um, to reduce sort of the, the, the loss of productivity that Auckland has suffered for, you know, I don't know how many years. Um, so I, I, I guess he was advised, and I, I suspect he was, that this is a strong issue to come out with at first. I agree with Jasmine, though. Why limit yourself to 100 days? Let it, if it takes more than 100 days, so be it. I mean, we would rather have something that works well and is well thought, thought through, well informed, as opposed to something that has been put together just to, to meet some, someone's idea around you know, just 100 days before everything gets sorted. Um, but I, I, I would like to think that transport is very much near the top of his list of all the other issues that he's going to be dealing with. Our politicians can probably clarify the whole 100-day concept because it is a very political concept, isn't it? That, yes. Well, the most recently it was used by the key government immediately after the last election as their 100-day plan. It resulted in some appalling decisions <laughs> and terrible legislation that was particularly bad for Māori and particularly bad for the environment, I have to say, um, including <laughs> things like, <laughs> I'll give you a long list if you like, including the um, like the national standards, for example, which is very, very bad for Māori well, we education. we won't go there now. But, but you know, but that was, that was the, the f from that point of view, it was like, this is, that was their demonstration of leadership. We've got this plan for 100 days, the things we're going to do and change. The, the idea of that, though, the concept of it is about the vision for that new leadership kind of con group or, or person. And so the, and what it does do is it gives people a sense of certainty about where that group of people is going to go. They can see the plan ahead. And so there is, there is some good rhetorical value in it, but yeah. only if they do good things, not if they do terrible things like the last guys did. I think it demonstrates that they're committed and they, you know, they've got a plan yeah. in place. But, um, you know, I'd rather have a well thought through plan as opposed to spending the other, the next hundred days trying to, fix the first hundred because um, they you know, did things too quickly or it wasn't um, done properly.